welcome back to my channel. We do sewing things here, and today I'm going to be working on a new um, set of accessories for my Regency dress. Now, what I love about the Regency time period is that you can completely change up the look of an outfit just by adding new accessories. So I have my Regency dress, simple white dress, and I've made um, some accessories to go with it uh, in the past out of a green sari, but this time I want to do a whole nother look and I want to try to recreate a specific fashion plate. This one. So what I love about this fashion plate is that it is just so whimsical. I mean, Regency in itself is like the most whimsical of time periods, but this one is just kind of bordering on silly. And actually when I showed it to my mom, she was like, Emily, don't you think that's just gonna look a little silly? And I was like, yes, that's the whole point. I love the silliness. I love the playfulness. So what I love specifically about this fashion plate is the little like polka dot pattern on the sheer overlay and what looked to me like, like tassels or, um, yeah, tassels or little, um, uh, like pom poms almost hanging off of the end of it. Um, and I also like the headpiece. It's just kind of like that, like sitting on the side of her head and then flowing down with that same fabric. So this is what I'm going to be recreating. Now I am going to switch it up a little bit. I'm gonna change the color palette to suit my personal taste a little bit more. So for the Spencer piece, I'm going to be using this pink silk taffeta that I had originally bought for another project, but that project just hasn't happened yet. And this Spencer is gonna take such a small amount of the fabric that I think I may even still be able to use it for the uh, other project that I originally intended or for something else. And then for the sort of sheer overlay fabric, I found this really great um, mint colored polka dot net fabric on Etsy. Um, and so that's what I am going to be using. So it's gonna be this kind of like pink and mint combo that I think is gonna look really nice together. I started by making the lining out of an old cotton bed sheet. Then I used that lining to be able to precisely cut out my silk fabric. And I tried to get all of the pieces that I would need for the Spencer to lay out horizontally across my 60 inch piece of silk so that I would use the least fabric possible. I ended up only needing to use about a half a yard of the pink silk. Then I ironed all my pieces flat and this was actually kind of a difficult step because this silk had all these little crinkles and folds in it that just really didn't want to come out. So I ended up kind of like reversing the fold on my um, ham, um, my ironing ham to see if I could kind of like work those uh, creases out because they just really did not want to come out of this fabric. So I have made the lining for the Spencer. Here it is. And I have top stitched. I don't know if you guys can see. I have top stitched so that all of my little raw edges stay to the inside. Because what I'm going to do now is um, I'm going to use 18th century construction methods and lay the silk over the top of this and pin prick stitch it down. So I wanted all of these like folded over raw edges to be very um, secure and straight. Now that means that you, you do get the top stitching on the sides, which I'm not bothered about. It's the lining. It'll be on the inside, you know. It's fine. I have no idea if this is a construction method that was used in the Regency period, but it's the one that I thought was easiest, so I'm going with it. So I have started the process of stitching down the silk onto the lining. You can see this was the first piece that I laid down, and then this one went on top of it. So now that I've done these two pieces, let's do one together. 
I started with notches already cut into the seam allowance of the silk and then I finger pressed it back right along that curved seam line. Then I placed the silk on top of the first piece, lining up that seam line as I went. And then I pinned it in place or clipped it in place and used a little prick stitch um, right along the edge of that seam. So it's a tiny little stitch that will show on the outside and then a longer stitch that shows on the inside. Did that all the way down that curved seam line. And then along the bottom and the top, I whip stitched that section. And I'm folding under the top and bottom edges of the silk so that it aligns with the lining underneath it, but sticks out just a little bit further so that none of that white lining is shown. For that very front piece, I needed to add in a bust start, so I just did that by hand. And then I placed it over my tailor's hand so that I could get it to line up and fit exactly over the bust dart of the lining. Then a quick try on just to see what it looks like. And I'm really happy with how this turned out. I think that pink silk is just beautiful and shimmery. The fit is gorgeous. I think it shows off the white dress and I'm really happy. Moving on to the sheer overlay, I went out on a limb and took a chance and just cut out like how you would cut a circle skirt, but made it a little bit smaller so that it would lay around my shoulders. And then I cut a couple of slits for my arms, didn't even finish those off, and then just planned on gathering up the top to fit around my shoulders. So did a quick try on to make sure that that was gonna work. I don't know what I would have done if it didn't because I didn't have more fabric, uh, but thankfully it did work. And then I had some extra pink silk taffeta. This is a lighter pink than what I used for the Spencer. I had this left over from the silk cap that I made for the Chocolate Girl project. And so I'm cutting out bias strips here that I use to bind the neckline of that um, a sheer overlay piece. And then I just gathered the sheer fabric by hand into that strip by marking out about equal quarters so that I would know approximately how much fabric to sort of bunch up into an area. It didn't need to be perfect. It didn't need to be exact. And then I went ahead and stitched that in place on the ribbon uh, and then uh, folded that over on itself and um, sewed it in place by hand um, with a slip stitch. Then at the shoulders where the two edges met, I sort of folded the ends over one another and made these little bows and then just stitched the bows together. And that's what sort of keeps the circular shape, what keeps it uh, closed over the shoulders. To make the pom-poms, I got uh, both mint and pink yarn, which I thought would be fun to kind of alternate those, the pom-poms, every other one on the edge. And then I took the edge of my yardstick and wrapped yarn around 200 times. And I experimented to see how many times I needed to wrap it. I made a couple of test pom-poms, tried doing 50, that wasn't anywhere near enough, tried doing 100, that wasn't anywhere near enough, and I ended up doing 200 uh, wraps so that I could make them all sort of consistently the same size. So wrapping that around the yardstick and then pulling it off the end of the yarn stick or yardstick and um, taking a string of that yarn and wrapping it around the middle of the bunched up yarn and then going back in with scissors and sort of cutting through all of the loops. And once you have that done, you end up with like a puff ball of yarn, but it is very uneven. And so then you go back in and kind of give it a little haircut with the scissors and try and make it all even and make it the approximate size that you want it to be. So all the pom-poms have now been given haircuts. They are approximately this size and much more round than when they first started. So I'm pretty happy with how these have turned out. The only thing is I'm a little worried that they're still 
a little heavy because I'm not sure how much weight the end of the fabric can take. I don't want to like put a little uh, like trim on the end of it because in the reference photo, it doesn't look like it has one. Like it looks like it is netting all the way down to where the pom-poms are. So now I have to try to figure out how I want to attach these. Um, any way I do it, it's gonna be really delicate and I'm just gonna have to be careful when I wear it. Um, Alternatively, I trim these down even more to cut off more of the weight, but they're kind of the perfect size right now. In the end, I did decide that the bottom needed to have some bias tape on it in order to take the weight of the pom-poms. So I had just enough of that pink silk taffeta left to make the tiniest bias tape you have ever seen. It was so cute and it worked really well and I'm glad that I made it um, and added it to the bottom of the sheer overlay piece. There really was no way to attach the pom-poms to the bottom of that overlay without it. Last but not least, I needed to make the headpiece and for this, I had some scraps of the same pink silk taffeta that I used for my Spencer, which I sewed together, pieced together to make enough to cover just the top portion of this like little mini straw hat. The same straw hat that I used to make my Annalise Outlander uh, trihorn hat. Uh, so I used the top of that to give it some structure, covered it with that pink silk taffeta, and then had a little of that light pink left over to make a, like a bias binding trim around the bottom edge of that. And then I just attached some of, extra of the sheer overlay fabric. I think it actually was the little circular piece that I had cut out of like where the waist or I guess where my head went in the circle skirt that I had cut out. I used that piece and attached it, uh, making it sort of like drape down one side. watching this video as much as I enjoyed making it. I'm really happy with how this project turned out and I'm honestly kind of surprised. Midway through this project I wasn't loving it and I almost didn't finish it but the second that I tried it on and spun around and saw how ridiculous it was it made me so happy and I was so happy with myself that I had actually finished it. And when I tried it on, I immediately had the thought that it reminds me a lot of I Dream of Jeannie. Uh, at, this is definitely I Dream of Jeannie if she lived in the Regency time period. This is what she would have worn. And even though it wasn't intentional, that also just kind of tickles me. So if you liked this video, please give it a like and subscribe to my channel to see more sewing content. Bye!